the diagnosis, because of how non-specific those symptoms are, like I said, is quite difficult to make. And often patients will go years without actually getting an accurate diagnosis because all the stuff they're feeling could be GI related, could be blood related, could be cardiac related. So they end up going through a battery and battery and battery of tests before somebody who really knows this condition or has heard of this condition might suggest that they be tested for. And because it's fairly uncommon, it tends to be kind of lower on the list of, of possible suggestions. The gold standard diagnostic test is what's called a tilt table test. TTT, tilt table test. And what they do is strap you to a table. Um, sometimes your arms are out, sometimes they're at your sides, and they basically, you're lying down and you're strapped in and they're measuring your heart rate and your blood pressure. And then they quickly elevate you up to a uh, upright position and they monitor your heart rate and your blood pressure. And they can keep you there for 10 minutes or even up to an hour to monitor what your heart rate does. Does your heart rate jump by that 30 or 40 beat mark? Does it stay elevated above 120 beats with an upright posture? Um, and the other thing they're looking for is, does your blood pressure essentially remain unchanged? Because there's two different conditions, right? There's postural orthostatic hypotension and then there's postural orthostatic tachycardia. So hypotension is a drop in blood pressure. So if we elevate you and we see a drop in blood pressure, your heart rate is gonna also elevate to accommodate for that drop in blood pressure. But that's not necessarily tachycardia because the tachycardia is the result of the drop in blood pressure. But if you elevate and your blood pressure stays relatively the same, but your heart rate jumps, that would be more indicative of postural orthostatic tachycardia. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, so Hayer and colleagues in 2006 found that up to 41% of pediatric concussion patients met the diagnostic criteria for POTS. There's another study I'm going to talk about in here by Cocorellis, and they found that it was about 15% of patients. So I think 40, 41 is probably a little bit high. 15% uh, seems more reasonable to me. Um, I've only had a handful of patients that uh, that we've picked this up on, um, so it's I think it's I think it's probably closer to that 15% mark. Okay, now um, because the the diagnostic you know criteria for this test is from you know changes in position and elevated and heart elevated heart rate without a reduction in blood pressure or a minimal reduction in blood pressure. Um, it's kind of one of those things that very few people are actually going to test for. I have picked this up during treadmill testing, and this is a lot of times where it gets picked up clinically uh, where you start to go, oh, geez, I wonder if this person has POTS. Uh, because you'll strap a heart rate monitor on your patient, and this is before we go and do the Buffalo treadmill test. Because it's such a part of what we do at CCMI clinics for concussion rehab, we will potentially pick this up because we're putting a heart rate monitor on a patient. They're sitting in a resting position. We're don't, not necessarily getting them supine, but they're, we're getting their resting heart rate from a seated position. And then we'll walk over to the treadmill test and all of a sudden I'll see somebody's heart rate now, which was at 70, is all of a sudden now sitting at 135. And we haven't even done anything. We've just basically taken a short walk over to the treadmill. And so that will kind of tip me off. Um, and so I'll watch that patient, I'll put them on the treadmill and if they fail that treadmill test early, meaning that they are basically exercise intolerant, the next time I see them, I'm going to be now on a higher lookout for POTS. Now, one thing you can do clinically without having the fancy tilt table is what's called an active standing test. Okay. So again, I'm not promoting this information for patients because this should always be done under the direction of a healthcare professional but for healthcare professionals out there that are interested check out the active standing test basically what you do is you have a patient lie supine on their back for about five minutes you're measuring their heart rate and their blood pressure or uh, as their supine and then you get them to stand up and you want them just to stand up for 10 minutes and then every minute you're taking their heart rate and their blood pressure as they stand there and those readings are what's going to tell you whether or not this person has POTS. Now, if this is just a screening test, you still are required then to get a tilt table test to confirm that diagnosis because that's the gold standard. But this can really provide you with some clinical information that anyone can do with minimal equipment 
uh, in your office to be able to screen for a patient with POTS. So if, like I said, if we pick that up on somebody who's on their way to the treadmill and they fail that treadmill test early, if they pass the treadmill, then it's lower on my list because they're not necessarily exercise intolerant. They're able to get it up there. And the treatment for POTS is exercise. And if they're able to tolerate exercise while in an upright position, I generally just let them proceed with that because they're already far enough down the road that uh, they're doing they're doing quite well. So I won't necessarily go through with it unless they have ongoing symptoms and issues with it. So what you're looking for, like I said, in children 19 and under, you're looking for an increase from their supine heart rate to their standing heart rate of greater than 40 beat, beats per minute. So if you see a jump of greater than 40 beats per minute and their blood pressure remains fairly constant with a minimal change, you're looking at potentially POTS. Uh, if they're 20 years or older, you're looking for an increase of 30 or more beats. And no matter how old they are, if they have a sustained heart rate of higher than 120, then it would be on your radar to do further investigation for this. Okay, one thing you should always keep in mind when you're looking at a patient that potentially has POTS is all the other things it could possibly be, right? This person may be anemic. This person uh, may have cardiac issues. This person um, may have a whole bunch of different things. So it's important to, to continuously try to rule out all the other things just to make sure that it's not something you know more serious uh, than, than POTS.